It was a cold and windy night in Chicago, and Jake was bored. He had nothing to do, and his friends were all busy with their own lives. He decided to take a walk around the city, hoping to find something interesting. He wandered aimlessly for a while until he came across the old water tower. He had seen it many times before, but he never paid much attention to it. It was a relic of the past, a reminder of the great fire that had devastated the city more than a century ago. He remembered hearing some stories about the water tower, how it was haunted by the ghost of a man who had killed himself there during the fire. He thought they were just urban legends, meant to scare tourists and kids. He didn't believe in ghosts. He decided to take a closer look at the tower, curious about its history and architecture. He crossed the street and approached the entrance. There was a sign that said, Closed for Renovation. He ignored it and pushed the door open. It was unlocked. He stepped inside and looked around. It was dark and dusty, with old pipes and machinery lining the walls. He felt a chill in the air as if he had entered a freezer. He shivered and pulled his jacket tighter around him. He walked up the stairs, hoping to find a better view of the city from the windows. He reached the second floor and saw a door that led to another staircase. He opened it and climbed up. He arrived at the top floor where he expected to see a large water tank. Instead, he saw a small room with a single window. He walked over to it and looked out. He gasped as he saw the city lights below him, sparkling like stars. He felt a surge of awe and wonder as if he had discovered a hidden treasure. He smiled and leaned closer to the window, trying to see more details. Suddenly, he heard a loud bang behind him. He turned around and saw that the door he had come through had slammed shut. He ran over to it and tried to open it. It was locked. He panicked and banged on the door, shouting for help. No one answered. He looked for another way out, but there was none. He was trapped. He felt a cold hand on the back of his neck. He screamed and spun around, facing the source of the touch. He saw a man hanging from the ceiling, his neck broken and his eyes wide open. He recognized him as the worker who had died in the fire, the one who haunted the tower. The man's mouth moved, but no sound came out. He pointed at Jake with a finger, as if accusing him of something. Jake felt a surge of fear and guilt, as if he had done something wrong. He backed away from the man, stumbling toward the window. He looked for a way to escape, but there was none. He was cornered. He heard the man's voice in his head, whispering in his ear. Why are you here? Why did you disturb me? Do you know what I did for this tower? Do you know what I sacrificed? Jake shook his head, trying to block out the voice. He didn't know what to say, what to do. He felt helpless and hopeless. The man's voice grew louder and angrier. I stayed here when everyone else ran away. I kept the pumps running, hoping to save the tower from the flames. I gave my life for this tower, and this is how you repay me. By breaking in and trespassing on my domain? Jake pleaded with the man, trying to explain himself. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. I was just curious. I wanted to see the tower. I didn't know you were here, I didn't know you were real. The man's voice turned into a roar. Liar. You knew. You knew all along. You came here to mock me, to laugh at me, to steal my glory. You don't deserve to live. You don't deserve to see the city I died for. The man reached out his hand and grabbed Jake by the throat. He lifted him off the ground and brought him closer to his face. Jake felt his breath on his skin, cold and foul. He choked and gasped for air, struggling to free himself. He clawed at the man's hand, but it was like iron. He felt his vision blur and his consciousness fade. The man smiled and said one last word. Goodbye. He threw Jake out of the window, sending him plummeting to his death. 